So this is a very solid question for USMLE step one in particular. If you're sitting for step two, you should still know this uh, important pharmacology, okay? So this patient has rheumatoid arthritis plus abdominal pain, and he's on an NSAID, right? So NSAID decreased uh, prostaglandin synthesis secondary to inhibition of cyclooxygenase, COX, uh, prostaglandins are necessary for maintenance of the mucosal barrier in the stomach. So he has some sort of gastritis or gastric ulcers. The exact distinction here isn't so critical. It's just knowing that he has some sort of depletion of the mucosal barrier or, or disruption of the mucosal barrier in the stomach because he's on naproxen and NSAID. USMLE has some sort of magical obsession with naproxen. Uh, obviously, there's tons of NSAIDs we could choose from, ibuprofen, diclofenic, etc. But naproxen uh, is a name that, hands down, you need to be aware of, especially if you're early in your step one prep. So we look at the answer choices here. Misoprostol, which is correct. It's a PGE1 analog. Uh, this can help uh, regenerate the mucosal lining in the stomach, notably in patients who have NSAID-induced gastritis or gastric ulcers, okay? So misoprostol, very high yield. Even if you, and I'll address these other answer choices, don't worry, but even if we make arguments for the others, it's a strict, very solid connection between NSAIDs knocking out prostaglandin synthesis and then misoprostol simply being the replenishment of our prostaglandin. So that's a very concrete link there. Now, looking at the other answer choices, bismuth, it's a distractor. It's part of second-line treatment for H. pylori. Uh, when we treat H. pylori, we use CAP, C-A-P, so clarithromycin amacrylide, amoxicillin, and a proton pump inhibitor, such as asomeprazole, choice B, or omeprazole, doesn't matter, but CAP, clarithromycin, amoxicillin, proton pump inhibitor, that's first line for H. pylori. If a patient after four weeks post-treatment, still has a positive urease breath test, we can assume resistance to the antibiotics, and we maintain the proton pump inhibitor, but we replace the clarithromycin and amoxicillin with tetracycline, metronidazole, and bismuth. Okay, You do not need to memorize that for the USMLE. I'm just telling you for how bismuth could relate here. It's part of second-line treatment for H. pylori. What you do need to know for USMLE okay, is the CAP, clarithromycin, amoxicillin, proton pump inhibitor as first line for H. pylori. There are variations to the treatments, okay, occasionally an H2 blocker can be used, but CAP, uh, that's the uh, respected first line um, combination of agents for H. pylori. Now, choice B, asomeprazole, I just chose a random proton pump inhibitor to write here. Uh, a two-week trial of proton pump inhibitors is what we do for suspected GERD, gastroesophageal reflux. So if they just give you a 51-year-old dude who's got some burning in his throat when he lies back after meals, our classic stereotypical scenario of GERD, uh, the answer is just two-week trial of proton pump inhibitor, okay? Um, I have I have seen on one of the surgery shelf questions for 2CK where an H2 blocker, trial of H2 blocker was correct, but I should note that uh, PPIs was not another answer choice because if you see both H2 blockers and proton pump, proton pump inhibitors together, always choose the proton pump inhibitor, okay? So um, metronidazole choice C, okay, I just... Uh, I just talked about how that's part of uh, second-line treatment for H. pylori. Uh, metronidazole, its mechanism of action is to uh, induce the formation of toxic metabolites that damage DNA. Um, there's a lot I can chat about, but get gap on the metro is a good mnemonic for remembering what metronidazole is used for. Get gap on the metro. So Giardia, Entamoeba histolytica, T. trichomoniasis, uh, the second G uh, would be Gardnerella vaginalis, uh, A, anaerobes below the diaphragm, and then P is H. pylori's second line. It used to be P for pseudomembranous colitis, but we do not use metronidazole for that anymore. As of February 2018, we give oral vanc for pseudomembranous colitis, C. diff now. Uh, but metronidazole, toxic metabolites that damage DNA, that's its mechanism, high yield. Uh, sucralfate. This coats ulcers, okay? That's what it does. It literally is just uh, a barrier type of agent that coats ulcers. 
And I can tell you one high yield detail you need to know, which is that proton pump inhibitors, if given concurrently with sucralfate, decrease the effectiveness of sucralfate. Apparently low pH is necessary for proper sucralfate cross-linking or however the fuck it's going to be lining your mucosal barrier. But if you ever got a question where the patient's on sucralfate and a proton pump inhibitor and uh, there's decreased efficacy in terms of the treatment, it's because the proton pump inhibitor is interfering with the sucralfate. So that's pretty much it, okay? Uh, we could do a long discussion on all this stuff, but uh, naproxen, uh, it's just knocking out your cox, mesoprostol, it's maintaining the mucosal lining. Uh, it'll, it'll stimulate the mucosal barrier in the stomach, uh, so that's the appropriate treatment here, and that's pretty much it.